Hey everybody. So you can see here, I got a, a NA engine on the dyno. Now this is for a good customer of ours. We went through this, fixed some things that were problematic with it. it used to only make 750 horsepower. It's a 582 cubic inch. Donovan aluminum block, runs on methanol, carbureted. This is your bones, your, this is your typical uh, dragster, fast bracket dragster engine. This is the typical deal right here. It was down on horsepower, so we fixed some things and we're back up on horsepower. But what I really wanted to show you is, and why I have this engine on the, on the dyno and why I'm showing you right now, is we also have done a dyno conversion. So if you want to come over here, one of the things on the dyno is that I build all this stuff and kind of basically make our own dyno setup. Um, we don't have a budget for uh, $2 million dynos, that kind of stuff. But, um, but I always want to try making things better. And uh, one of our dyno load control valves, or our dyno load control period, was uh, out of date. Not only out of date, it's not serviced anymore. My other dyno is not serviced anymore. So I contacted the guys at your dyno and they're over on the uh, other side of the ponds. They're over in Europe and um, Norway, I think. And uh, forgive me if I'm wrong on that. Yostin. Uh, Yostin is uh, your dyno. And uh, so anyways, they go, hey, we can take care of this whole thing. We have some really good componentry. So I've swapped everything over from my, my D-Pack, um, which is not serviceable anymore. So my D-Pack load control and data acquisition all to your dyno. So, uh, that's what I've been doing on this particular dyno for quite a while. So we used our test mule. Uh, we have a 740 horsepower bracket test mule that makes 740 horsepower every single time you make a dyno pull on it. And uh, so we've done that. We've already calibrated dyno. Everything's all cool. So we throw this thing on there, uh, which is making 1,000 horsepower because I wanted to test repeatability because this is a bracket car, so they really want you know, repeatability is the big key. Uh, repeatability on the on the data acquisition and how it sweeps and how it controls and so far I'm really happy and one of the things that I really like on this uh, if you look at any of my uh, old videos the uh, in fact I can show you on the other dyno what style it is the hard parts on this is really nice you see the the stepper motor is a direct attachment to the uh, valve and they provide this entire setup here, very nice tight sealed uh, stainless steel valve assembly and this direct drive motor. So it's very fast and so very quick. I like that quite a bit. Um, the electronics are nice, the data acquisition is, is nice and it's, uh, it doesn't have uh, 15,000 channels of information that nobody really ever looks at. It's very simple, very easy to use and uh, just pops up, bang, shows you a number and I'll show you that in just a minute. So, uh, all this stuff is all the same. It's all electronics and this load control and data acquisition. So I'll show you how this works and, and uh, if you ever watch any of my old videos, um, you can see what I wanted to do is I wanted it to work, it work the same, if not better, than the D-Pack stuff that I had on it, which it does, and be simpler and easier to use on the uh, data acquisition, which I'm pretty happy with that too. So uh, this is all in this whole dyno deal here. Uh, going back to this thing, so the engine wise, uh, so like I said, it made 750 horsepower when it came in. Uh, we pre dynoed it, then we come into it, tear it apart, and figure out stuff that's wrong with it. And uh, we did a camshaft change, um, connecting rod change because you want to put a steel connecting rod in it instead of aluminum. So like I said again, 582 cubic inch, this is your typical fast bracket methanol carbureted engine. And uh, what you'll see out there when we make the dyno pull is I'll talk to you about the uh, uh, horsepower and where it levels off and what's all going on with it. So uh, let's, I'll show you the other dyno and the, the low control valve over there real quick and then we'll uh, come, come back and make a pull on the dyno. 
So here, you might get on the other side. It's a little, little cluster yet over here. But this is the dyno control valve for this dyno. So this is a D-pack setup. So you can see the stepper motor is right here. And so it runs through actually a little cog belt and a fire valve. And if you want to come over on this side, Tim, you can see it real easy. And so different type of valve, just a simple butterfly valve in there. And uh, like, like I said, it's not a direct drive. So I really like this whole setup. Um, very, very accurate. And it has a, here with the D-Pack stuff, you can't have any controls. I just try, you know, you just kind of set it and try to find the magic number on the other system. It, um, setting parameters, setting other things. I can make some changes and uh, make it do and respond the way I want it to. So let's go out there, we'll make a pull on this thing and we'll talk about the engine just a little bit more. So one of the things I actually like about it is it actually tells me what my brake position is so I know where the valve position is and I can program this very easily to go to a start position, which is nice. So here, that is all load control of what the valve is actually doing live time. So it's pretty nice. Automatically pops up these numbers up here, which is pretty nice. I like that, that's cool. And here, then we'll go to our data graph. And what we've been doing is we have been working on the uh, been working on the um, excuse me, I've got sidetracked. I've been working on a little bit of the carburetor, trying to get there. But as you can see, this is the last uh, one, two, three, four, five. I think the last six poles in a row, and all we've been doing is just a little bit of carburetor stuff. Trying to just find the magic little sweetheart spot in the uh, in it, and so we've been changing air bleeds and been doing some other stuff. But you can see here, this is really nice overlaid graphs. You can, I like the way it does this here. So we're, uh, yeah, I mean every pull has been, especially right through there, it's been within three or four horsepower. So. All that stuff looks really good. Uh, obviously this thing, uh, you saw it just made a, what was it, 1,002, I think it said? 1,002? Yeah, 1,003, 1,003 horsepower. Um, so it's 250 horsepower increase, changing cam, putting the correct camshaft, uh, doing that. Oh, I was gonna talk to you about this a little bit of layover. So what we've been working on with the high-speed air bleeds is uh, it does lay over a little early. And what's going on here is it is running out of air. So this is where it was, a stock carburetor, or not stock carburetor, but the carburetor that came on it. So we're still utilizing what came on the carb, or what came on it for a carburetor. And so all these lines here are all stuff that we've stepped up, increased. This is the last one that we just did right here, trying to get it to move that RPM range out some and don't need to make as much horsepower up here not real concerned because it has made 1018 uh, this last time with this carburetor setting with this air bleed setup we're flatter and it's gone out here nicer and carried out by doing high speed air bleed change so what's going on there is the carburetor is a little small and as soon as it starts running out of air and it can't pull air enough it pulls so much vacuum into the carburetor it starts pulling more fuel because the carburetor is just a tick small for this engine. So that's what's going on. That's what's uh, going on with the, uh, the dyno. I've spent quite a while, been on the phone with the Your Dyno guys. Uh, make sure you go check them out. They got really good stuff if you're looking for a dyno control market, that kind of stuff. So I'm happy with that. 
got new up-to-date stuff with a really good uh, service and people that are there right away that can help me do anything and set any parameters and all that kind of stuff so real happy with that engine's good uh thing is picked back up it's right where it should be probably could use obviously could use a carburetor change but uh, chris is just going to run it the way it is and has a bunch of other cars and other carbs and other stuff so they'll be switching stuff around if they need to um but it's kind of that nice little world of uh uh natural acerated stuff that's in that thousand horsepower and below is you can throw a carburetor on it and probably isn't going to kill it <laughs> on anything that makes these 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 horsepower stuff, um, one wrong number and it's burned up. So <laughs> it's kind of nice to work on stuff like this every once in a while because it's, a, it, it's a much more tolerant, much more forgiving. So anyways, uh, some really neat stuff there. Super happy with Dyno. This engine's all done for uh, Coslix. And uh, I think that's a really nice piece and give you a little bit of tech on what's going on with carburetor stuff on when it's a little too small for the engine it actually runs out of air and pulls more fuel out of it. So uh, it's just a little bit of old school carburetor tap. So I'm Steve Morris, Steve Morris Engines. Have a great day.